obviously we've just done the, uh, the little walk through talk through downstairs so obviously we're going to put that into a practical sense actually on the actual roof itself I'm going to just show you now the the expansion gaps the actual screw markings on the boards as well going across the 200 centers and obviously reiterating the fact that we've actually gone down into the furrings as well so that's give you us a real solid base to go on to and then we'll show you some corners and some trim work When I discussed everything with you, how you wanted us to fit the uh, 8B2 OSB3 board, just talk us through the deal. When I was trying to understand it over the phone, what we actually had to do, I was just, you know, I think a seed of doubt. So yep. let's go and have a look at that detail now. So this is only what we've done. Obviously, we've used tongue and groove boards on this, so we yep. haven't got the we haven't got a tape and joint the the boards on this. We've just got a primer, the, the edge with the fixings on the boards. We've gone for 200 centres, and then yep. obviously we've stepped at 400 centres along yeah. the length of the board, so we've got a real solid fixing on yeah. the base. Now, one thing I, I did notice what I wanted to discuss with you, some of them we've had to put another fixing in for yeah. some of reason, but what obviously we'll do, we'll spin this one back out, because yeah. it's really important that we don't have these raised screws like this, no. isn't it, mate? You no, know, no so. you don't want anything protruding up through yeah. the fibre, because okay. then that's a potential breach of the system. And is it, does it matter how deep we go with the screw? Because obviously this is 18 mil board, so if we suddenly go like three, four, five mil too deep into the actual OSB, instead of and dead flush like we've sort of got here see like this is a little bit deeper yeah it, it, does that really matter or does the rest uh, does it sort of make the, it back up again the rest tech system will actually fill the holes in yeah but you're always best to try and keep them flush, keep them as flush as you a, can a couple of mil below yeah uh obviously then because obviously you're going through that 18 mil so you're yeah. losing the integrity of the screw on the, yeah. on the board so uh yeah but anything sticking up like this for instance yeah we'll just take that back out and make sure and we'll double check the roof just before we go and uh, start laying the system anyway just you always go through those pre checks gotcha. uh, just to make sure that the system goes down with no no hiccups, no hiccups in it and so um, obviously then cleaning it down we use blowers not everyone's yeah. got blowers on there so you could use hoovers or yeah. a brush or anything like hoovers, that hoovers a soft broom obviously if you can contain the mess as, as much yeah. as possible even when you're cutting if you can use extraction on your, your, your cutters and stuff like yeah. that it just stops the contamination that can go into the first uh, layup okay the now obviously there's a, a bit of a funny detail when you first explained this to me on the phone I was like really and you see yeah because of the the curve of the mold so yeah explain why we got such a an expansion gap now the expansion gap of 25 mil is on both sides any yeah. sort of uh, abutment as you would sort of call it yeah it has to have that 25 mil expansion gap doesn't yeah. it? you know so the it's so the idea of the roof actually when it's all clicked together it actually moves as a raft yeah but obviously being a natural material it's going to expand and contract yeah so if we put those boards right up against the edge yeah what you'll tend to find is especially with the traditional fiber and stuff like that you find it actually pushes out that far and swells yeah. that can actually rupture the joints yeah gotcha. so by having that 25 mil expansion gap it gives you that that room to expand and then this this is what you hear a lot of uh, a problem on the forums they don't allow enough of an expansion which then yeah. creates that and that's why um, you do read that there are issues with this cracking, I think, and yeah. this is because they've not allowed enough expansion gap, really. Yeah, it's, I mean, to be honest, the, 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 the Fire Blast as a system is a really good system. It's just mainly, my, in my experience, it's coming across poor installation. Yeah, okay. And it's normally regarding the boards upwards and then obviously the mixing of the system, but we can go into that later anyway. Yeah. But regarding the actual boarding, if you're boarding solid and you've got enough expansion, even if you use an 8 before sheets, you've got yeah. minimum 3 mil gaps in between, it just allows for the roof to move and contract because yeah. obviously you're going to be putting a, a dark colour on the roof and it's a natural product so it's going to draw heat yeah. so naturally it's going to expand in the morning and contract as it cools down of an evening yeah, so okay. if you didn't do that you'd get the banging sound or potentially ruptures down the actual board lines gotcha i see so what we've got here is you've asked us to slightly come up on this vertical yep. the upright so obviously the board then can float into that 25 mil gap yeah and then you've asked us then to do this detail here as well haven't you yeah it, it's it's quite funny because it, it looks a bit odd to uh, people who don't do it all the time yeah. but if you look at the actual curb and i'll show you that in a minute you've yeah. got an actual radius edge yeah so if you put these put these up to a 90 degree corner yeah. it actually cut that fillet yes off. gotcha I see, so yeah. therefore it would it hold water on the edge yeah so what we do is we step it down about 10 mil step the top back 10 mil and then that just incorporates that radius edge yeah. it doesn't have anything impeding and, the trim and has no kind of weakness it's still really super strong isn't it oh yeah, yeah definitely yeah. because you can you can uh, glue and uh, nail the actual trims on as well yeah so you get that extra strength there as well yeah. so these once they go on they shouldn't move right then guys obviously i've been talking to tony about this radius edge and i just wanted to show you a bit of a close-up shot so you can actually see what i'm actually talking about so obviously you've got this this radius edge here 
we've stepped the boards down 10 mil and back 10 mil so when you actually put these this trim on obviously you're going to glue and nail this on but obviously that allows for the no impediment on the actual radius edge so you get a nice flat finish to your wall and a nice rounded edge on the edge what i'm going to do now is i'm going to go through two different ways of doing the corners for instance you can use these pre-made corners like the clients opted here today but we can also do it if you don't want to use these pre-made corners there is another way so i'll just show you that you can actually make a corner with your fillet trims so the easiest way of doing it is sail your trim back straight over make sure you're flat against the back edge and flat onto the deck and then just give your front edge a mark with your other trim do exactly the same make sure you flat into the deck and flat into the back of the area and just mark that so then you end up with a 90 corner. What you want to do then is put it back on and just score, mark the back of the actual trim itself. And then from that corner then, you'll cut down to the base. And then from that section there, you'll cut straight across on a rough 45. And we use some snips because obviously it cuts down on the dust. And then we're just cutting straight across, straight up to that edge there. Doing it like this you may have to play about with this angle because sometimes they step up and that so you just might have to just play about with the corner a little bit okay so your first one is there ready to go on so we just need to repeat the process with the next piece put it on the corner mark the back and again we're coming from that corner there and we're gonna cut straight up to here there and then we're cutting straight across there so when you join them, join them together, if you've got a square corner, this is probably the easiest way of doing it because you can actually come right in line with the corner. So you make sure you trim's up against, your next corner's in, and you'll pull those to suit. And you just nail them up. Obviously these trims are flexible, so you just have to nail these nice and tight, okay? If you don't want to do that, and you want to make it a little bit easier for yourself, you can actually buy the pre-made corners. The only thing you've got to be mindful of is you've got a radius edge again, a bit like the trim detail that we've got on the top. You've got a 90 degree corner here. So the easiest way of doing that is just to either cut or use a sanding disc just to take the edge, the corner off, so you can get that back in. Otherwise you'll see it actually holds off the actual trim itself. And the idea is you want to get that trim nice and tight against that wall. Okay, so I'm just going to do that now. Like I was saying, uh, you just need a sanding pad on the grinder, or you can do it with a saw as well. You just need to take this sharp corner off, basically. So obviously, if you're using a grinder, use a bit of eye protection, guys. And just offer it back up, just double check. Get it back up. So if you can see now, that's gone nice and tight around that corner. So that is just how you want it. So when you pin that back, it's nice and tight and you're not going to get anything pushing your fibre glass off otherwise you'll get it holding off and you can potentially get air pockets behind your fibre glass which just isn't any good for the system okay so when it comes to fixing these uh, corner pre-made corner trims offer it up make sure you've took that round off nice and nice and good because then you can get the trim nice and close now, there's a couple of ways of actually using a fix on this you can either use pins plate nails uh, ring shank nails just to basically keep them down into the deck or you can do my favorite which is a staple gun with a long staple on there so obviously if you're using a staple gun use eye protection you know they can be very aggressive make sure your trims push right back into the corner and fix off the front corner and again make sure it's pushed as it goes all the way around and then literally every 100 mil or so and then just pin into the wall because as you can see they're pushing off because they're pre-made and obviously the surface is slightly different so just give it a tack in there we go and that holds that nice and secure on there and fixed off already just like the pre-made external corners they actually do an internal corner as well so this just saves you having to worry about trying to monitor up the corner and they do actually give you a really strong corner obviously you've got the radius edge literally all you need to do push them in position and just make sure that back is nice and tight into the back edge and the base is nice and flat so you can actually do it with the standard trims as well you just feed the first trim in and then just copy the shape of the trim and then literally you just put those up and then reinforcing tape down that edge but for the client today we're using these pre-made corners i put one in the first edge and then literally across the side there 
you're nice and happy with that, it's not going to move now. And then just a couple in the side. And then again, repeat the process. You don't have to worry too much about these fixings because obviously this is going to be an upstand for the parapet wall. So this whole section is going to be fiberglass. This will be reinforced and then a, a layer of fiberglass is going to go over this as well. So you've got a double protection there. So any, any penetrations you've put through the trim is going to be nice and watertight. So, you know, that'll probably be the first question everybody asks and that's, that's why we, we don't worry about those because it's going to get lapped over with fiberglass. Obviously you've put your, your pre-made corner in, so you're going to want to attach your fillet trim if you're doing your long run. So what we tend to do is do roughly anything from 50mm to 75mm overlap onto the actual trim itself. And what we want to do is we want to put some sealant down here. Obviously I use the OB1 because uh, it's a good sealant and it's a good adhesive as well. So you get a nice, nice adhesion on the actual trim itself. So you just want to do two beads, be quite generous with it. And what I tend to do is I'll sail the trim past slightly and then pull it so basically this trim gets smeared onto the back so it gets it nice and flat to the back of the edge. Okay, so literally pull it past and then just pull it through. Just give it a quick look over the top. Yep, I'm about 75mm. I'm happy with that. So what I'll do now is I'll fix through to the, the actual deck itself. These trims are three meters long, so I'll fix one end in place, making sure I'm nice and flat onto the deck. I'll do the opposite end and then the middle and then I'll work from the middle outwards. Now, the manufacturers normally state roughly about every 150 mil. What I tend to do is bring them in every 100 mil, or roughly about four inch, because some of the trims can be quite flimsy. These ones are really nice to work with, but I'll still stick to the premise of roughly about 100 mil fixings. So on this edge, I'm nice and happy here. I'll just give that a tack, tack in place. Now, the reason I tack both ends yeah. is because if you start at one end yeah. and walk all the way up, your wall could be out of, uh, yeah, you know, yeah, definitely. Not, everything's flat in the training centre, yeah. but in reality, your walls can be bowing. So yeah. if you tack both ends, tack the middle, and then work out from the middle, just put yeah. your nails every 100 mil, that keeps that trim nice and down yeah, yeah. as well. Yeah, it keeps it nice and in. Any fixings that go through, you're gonna put a reinforcing bandage over it yeah. anyway, so you're not gonna see those nails eventually. Yeah. It's just to hold the trims in place while the system's uh, yeah. being laminated onto them. Now, I noticed when you put that tack in there, you didn't then like kind of push that down and then put a tack in there, you leave that afterwards, so yeah. you get that in first. I get the, the base down first, and, yeah. then I'll, and then I'll put some in the top. the top. I will okay. only do this on the parapet walls. Yeah. If it was up against the house, for instance, I'd just nail through the base on there. Yeah, okay. The reason with the parapet walls is obviously because you're fibre glassing up and over as well. Yeah. So you want that rigid. Now there's a lot of sort of talk out in the industry about you know the flexibility and you've got yeah. the expansion traction. These trims will actually flex yes. so far. So whether they're fixed or not, they will still flex. Gotcha, okay. So and obviously it's going to be a lateral movement, not a vertical yeah. movement. Gotcha. So it won't shear the fixings on there. Yeah. Okay. We've done hundreds of roofs now and we've never had an issue doing it like this. And again, pushing down nice and tight and fix in and then literally work from there then every hundred mil and there we go that's your one section and we'll just repeat the same now what you'll find on this is that we've got a really decent fall on the roof the one thing to remember as well is what you don't want to do is put these trims under any excess pressure than what they've they've got already obviously the fall's going down but we've got a camber both ways on this roof so what we want to do is where the trim's flat to the deck you can see the trim starts lifting naturally at this point. So what we'll do on that point of the camber is we'll cut the trim and then we'll do another joint on there just so we take any stress off that trim as it is. So what we'll do, we'll cut that now and then we'll overlap that again, roughly about 75 mil and still use the, the OB1 sealant down on there, a couple of lines down and just step that over. It's basically so you create a, a kind of pitch with the actual trim itself. So you can see there straight away, that's took any pressure off that trim whatsoever. Where if you'd left it, carrying all the way through, you would have been pulling the trim down and that puts the trim under excess pressure. And obviously you're gonna want these trims to work with you and expand and contract. So if you've got them under pressure from the start, you'll find they'll probably snap and crack and then you could potentially have a breach through the system. So always use the trims to your advantage. I'm going to give a shout out to my uh, mate Danny Madden, he does a lot of uh, fiberglass, uh, I don't know whether he's used it, I think he has actually used this system and uh, 
Ray Finnegan as well from Howard. They both use a lot of fiberglass and twin build actually. They use a lot of fiberglass as well. You see on Instagram and YouTube. So a big shout out to them three guys. If you don't follow them, make sure you go and follow them. what you'll find sometimes with the with the pin guns they will shoot in but on the occasion you will get one that either hits a hard bit of resin underneath so what you need to do with those is just literally get your hammer bring that out and just snap them off and just make sure you've got another fixing where that one was so again just here and there we go and it's quite easy because they're because the staples the idea is they just hold the trim in place until it's laminated and then obviously if you haven't got the budget for a pink gun you can use tape nails or the standard ring shanks but the standard go-to is normally tape nails and sometimes you find where the two trims overlap for instance uh, it's going to be quite dense so sometimes you may just need a, a few nails just through where the two trims overlap because you may not be able to get a fixing with your staple for instance sweep around the whole roof anyway yeah uh, and then just double check the trim so we've got nothing sticking up through the reinforcing yeah. matting when we're doing it okay well i've cut these trims they're ready to go in now mate brilliant so again just looking at your trim obviously just so you don't make any mistakes you've from you've got a real large edge and it is quite noticeable you've got a larger edge and a shorter edge you want ideally the shorter edge to the deck so you've got your standard 150 mil upstand. If they overhang or over sail, you can just trim these off, either with a grinder or some snips. So when you put your next detail over the top, it just basically keeps it nice and solid. I do really like this system mate it's like really easy and quick in it oh yeah definitely I mean especially the the 2020 system what we tend to find is especially when I'm training people uh, those guys who come from the traditional fiberglass where it's quite rigid yeah. the 2020 system is quite uh, flexible yeah so and because it's all we fluffy rollers and you don't yeah. use the consolidating rollers yeah like the uh, the bubble busters yes uh, it's just a lot easier people pick it up a lot easier and because it can go over uh, overlays, you can go onto new board. As a fiberglass system, it just opens up to so much work. It's, it's, it's unbelievable. I've got to say, I'm really, really impressed, you know, sort of the way it works. I mean, when we, when we start laying up later on, uh, yeah. you'll find, you'll be surprised how easy it is to, to install. Obviously, again, you've still got to follow your processes. Yes, yeah. Um, but if you stick to a, a, a rigid process as you're going through, it just makes the whole job so much easier for yourself. An amazing company really, aren't they? Uh, rubber for roofs. Yeah. Um, really Tom yeah. and Tina set up about 20 years ago and he's just an amazing uh, person, isn't he? Through my own company, Birmingham Flat Roof, and we've used them now for uh, since they since they pretty much opened, yeah, the level of service we get from them is, is superb. Yeah, uh, but obviously because they they do rubber systems and stuff like that as well. Yeah, uh, we use them for that as well. So uh, it's it's kind of like a one stop shop for us at the moment. So it really works well with us. So how long have you been roofing now, mate? As a flat roofer. Uh, and what made you get into roofing, mate? I fell into doing flat roofing. Yeah, uh, I was a carpenter by trade. So you're on the dark side with me then? Yeah, definitely. Um, and then we we went into uh, doing the rubber roofing because we were doing garden rooms at the time. Yeah. And Is that due to uh, COVID? A lot of people doing it through COVID, weren't they? No, we. I mean, to be honest, we were doing it before it was even really popular, to be honest. Yeah. Uh, so we, we started doing rubber roofs. Uh, so that's why we started using rubber roofs for, for the gear. Yeah. Um, and then we moved on to uh, doing a bit of fiberglass. And we was doing a bit... Uh, 
on my company we've, we've got two sides so we've got a uh, the roofing side yeah and we've also got the leisure side so we do a lot of aquarium work and stuff like that as well oh wow okay so we've got quite heavily into the fiberglass inside yeah um, and then uh, the wife mentioned to me one day she said well you know have you seen these fiberglass roofs they're all doing so i had a look and i could see there was lots of issues with them and i couldn't understand why so we yeah. started getting into it and yeah we made quite a big name for ourselves quite quickly that's um, brilliant though so and then obviously from there then i've moved into doing the training as well now yeah so we've now set up another company called train to gain uh, so we can go out and assess guys doing it for a living and give them an yeah. actual substantial qualification that's brilliant so, so is that like a, an mvq then is it yeah so you can get a, an mvq so literally we'll go out onto sites uh, if they're doing five last systems single ply yeah. and epdms uh, we can go out to site, assess them wider on site, so not losing any time off the job. Yeah. They're still getting the work done, but also working towards qualification as well. That's brilliant. That's so really, we can assess really them. Uh, and plus, um, the other thing is that the client knows it's getting done as it should be done. Oh, definitely. It gives the client confidence that yeah. they, they're skilled at what they're doing. Uh, they understand yeah. the systems, uh, because obviously going through the MVQ process, they're being vetted. They're being vetted against their um, uh, the criteria for the actual uh, MVQ. Yeah, yeah. So they've got to know how to do it right and correctly. Yeah. So uh, by having the MVQ, it gives a client uh, a lot of uh, a lot of confidence in the. Yeah. No, ride. absolutely, absolutely. Because you know, with this industry, you know, it, unfortunately, the um, TV channels have ripped it apart, really, haven't they? Yeah. Whereas yeah. we all know there's some amazing roofers and amazing trades people yeah. out there, isn't there? You know, yeah, all trades. I mean, it's the same roofing, as any trade. Carpentry, um, whatever, whatever. So. Yeah. It's just I think the the guys actually spend the time and the effort you know yeah. to actually you know invest in themselves they're, they're investing yeah. in the customers as well and obviously the customers can see that so naturally they'll, yeah. they'll, they'll want them to come and do the job naturally so basically if you want to get trained in the um, the fiberglass roofs definitely check out Aaron um, and it's trained to gain it's a really really great concept great idea he's doing it in partnership with um, rest tech is yeah. rest tech isn't it and yeah. uh, so it's, it's a great idea and also Aaron's moving towards obviously creating the whole affiliation group so people can have confidence going to Aaron using his affiliation uh, scheme that he's going to be working out so people know whoever's going to be trained by Aaron uh, is actually going to be an amazing job, you know? Yeah. So I think it's a yeah. great shot, mate. It's just to try awesome. and give that confidence back to yeah. the industry. Absolutely, and obviously check out the um, the channel, uh, Instagram accounts, uh, all the links are going to be down below. Birmingham Flat Roofing, anything you need to know if you're in the Birmingham vicinity. How, how far do you reach out to? Uh, normally we just cover the whole of the West Midlands, West Midlands. Uh, just due to the fact of the geographical area. Yeah. Uh, and obviously the further out we go, the more cost it incurs. So that's, I don't find that fair on the customer. Nah, yeah. So we stay within the West Midlands boundary. Um, so that's for the roofing company. As for the MVQs, we will travel UK wide. We'll go from Edinburgh straight down to Plymouth. That's brilliant. Basically. So any of you guys out there in anywhere in the UK, contact Aaron. We're going to put all the links down below so you can get hold of this guy or even a, a DIY who wants to have a go at himself, you know, who wants to get himself trained, have himself a look, whatever. So definitely check out all the links and speak to Aaron. He's the guy. So thank yeah. you for your Cheers. time doing this, mate. Sweet. Fantastic. So.